K-means is a simplified approach to clustering. It's similar to the Gaussian mixture models, with the difference being that in K-means we make some so-called hard choices about the means of each cluster. So what this means is that we start with some initial values for the means of the cluster and we update them iteratively throughout the training. And this is an, in contrast with the softer choices we made in the Gaussian mixture models, where we consider the whole data set as a mixture of several Gaussian distributions, and we had a careful approach about the mean and the uh, variances of each one of these distributions. The basic concept is, however, the same. The data comes from several distinct clusters, and we aim to identify them. So in this um, method in, in k-means clustering, we have k, um, so-called reference vectors. And, and they will be, uh, the idea of the reference vectors is that they are the means of each one of our clusters. So we are aiming to identify k clusters. and we have these um, means or, or reference vectors for each one of the clusters. They are also called sometimes prototypes or codebook vectors or code words. And um, the idea is that they best represent the data in that particular cluster. And so we have these reference vectors mj with j from uh, 1 to k. Um, and if we had them already, we will discuss in a moment how to train the model to find them. But once we have them, the prediction of the model is going to be quite simple. So uh, given a new data point xt, the prediction is going to be you place it in a cluster whose mean is the closest to this data point. So in other words, you are going to say I'm in cluster i if xt minus mi, the, the norm of this vector, is the minimum of all possible norms xt minus mj. So that's another way of saying um, the uh, the closest I am to the mean of one of these clusters, that's the cluster where, where I'm going to place this data point. Once we train the model, the reconstruction error of that model is given by this form. Uh, so the error of the model with reference vectors mi from 1 to k, given data point x, is simply this sum. So you will take the sum for all the data points and the sum for all the clusters, and you are going to say, well, I want to include in this reconstruction error the um, distance between my um, data point and the uh, mean of my cluster. So that's going to be xt minus mi, but it's going to be multiplied with this uh, label, which is 1 if xt belongs to cluster i, um, and it's going to be 0 otherwise. So bit is going to be 1 if this norm xt minus mi is exactly the minimum. So in other words, xt was placed in, in, um, in cluster i. So once again, this reconstruction error is a measure of how um, closely um, distributed the data points are around their mean. So it's going to be the distance between each data point to the um, uh, mean of the cluster where we have placed that data point. And obviously, we would like this reconstruction error to be as small as possible. We would really like to have each data point to be placed in a cluster um, that's uh, closest to this data point, or its mean is the closest to this data point. So obviously, we have this problem of minimizing this um, reconstruction error. And so the problem here is that um, you have, on one hand, uh, you know, uh, an optimization problem depending on these MIs. But the bigger problem is that these labels BIT, they also depend uh, on the label. And they depend in such a fashion that applying calculus directly to this optimization problem uh, is impossible. So we cannot really get an analytic solution. And the alternative is that we will have a numerical heuristic. And we will discuss about this in, in just a moment. I just want to open up the idea. Uh, we will have an iterative procedure of updating the reference vectors step by step. And somehow the basic idea is this, that if you, if we had the labels fixed, so not depending on, on M, then in fact we could use uh, calculus to find out M. So uh, let me just show you this for a moment. Assuming that these labels BIT are fixed and they don't, they don't really depend on, on M, then this is a problem, uh, an optimization problem on M, so I can just calculate the derivative of this reconstruction error with respect to each one of these MIs, and I can set it to zero. 
And, and then based on that, I'm going to find out right away that the optimal solution uh, is going to be exactly uh, mi is sum by t of b i t uh, x t over sum by t of b i t. And so this is, again, with the labels uh, not depending on, on m. Um, and I'm going to show you now the how, how we use this idea in, uh, in this iterative uh, algorithm. So um, the idea here is that we are going to initialize the means uh, or these um, uh, reference vectors uh, mi um, to some values. And there is a small discussion I'm going to have in just a moment how to initialize this. But let's say at the moment we don't think too much about this. Let's just say you know, we, we initialize them to, to k random vectors. Uh, this, uh, this is a matter of importance, and then I comment on this in just a moment. But for, for now, let's assume that we have whatever initial values for these reference vectors. And the iterative, iterative algorithm is going to be like this. For We are going to have an, uh, you know, a cycle. We are going to iterate through this until we have these vectors converging. So the changes in these vectors uh, are uh, so small that, that they, uh, they don't matter anymore. And so we will have a cycle until these ve vectors converge. Uh, and the cycle will do the following thing. For all the data points uh, in our set, for all xt in x, First of all, we are going to check um, what's the label of these data points given the current reference vector. So we are going to set the labels for them and we are going to place them in vector i simply if our data point is closest to mi out of all these um, uh, reference vectors uh, m1 to mk. And once we fixed the labels for each data point, uh, the labels in this current iteration, then we are going to update the reference vectors simply with this. We are going to say mi takes this form. And you see that this form is exactly the uh, optimal form for these vectors if the labels were fixed. It's exactly what I wrote on the previous slide. Um, so here is the idea, right? You start with some initial values for these vectors, and then in each cycle, assuming that these vectors, these reference vectors are fixed, um, then you fix the labels, and once you fix the labels, you are updating the, the vectors. And then you continue with these fixed vectors, you update the labels, and then you are updating the, um, the vectors, and, and so on. So you, you cycle through this until these um, uh, vectors are converging. And obviously, this is a local search, and, and the results, in fact, are going to depend quite much on this um, initialization step. And, and so there is some thought that you should put into this um, uh, initialization step. Uh, I, I wrote here that, you know, it could be initialized to random, and that's certainly one attempt you can make. Um, but you could also um, initialize them in a different way. Maybe you have some information about the areas uh, where your clusters are expected to be, and then you, you can initialize these uh, reference vectors in those areas. Um, Another idea is that you would calculate the mean of the whole data set, and then you, you would initialize these reference vectors to be somewhat around um, uh, that mean. So maybe you're adding some random noise to the mean of the whole data set. Um, there is also another idea that maybe you apply a principal component analysis, and you take the principal component, and you set these um, initial vectors somewhat along this, um, this uh, you know, the largest, um, the, the first principal component um, at some distance from each other. Um, and I want to show you also one example of how this uh, algorithm evolves in practice. Um, here is the way you should read this plot. Uh, this is the initial step. And in this, uh, uh, in this example, we have a two-dimensional data set and the data points are indicated with these small uh, blue dots. And in the initial step, uh, let's say that we made the random choice and we set the, uh, the, the two reference, so we are aiming for two clusters, and we set the two reference vectors uh, in these places where we indicated them by axes. So these are the uh, two reference vectors in the initialization step. Uh, 
And then we are estimating the labels uh, of all these data points. And it turns out that here there is a data point very close to this one. So obviously it's going to be set to belong to, to this cluster. And, and this one may be, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind, kind of close to, to both, but let's say that it was closer to this one. So this also will be set um, to the cluster belonging to, to this data point. And, and maybe, uh, you know, all the other ones, they belong to this one. So I don't indicate them in any special way, but they would belong to the cluster represented by this reference vector. And then we do one step on this. And in this step, we are going to reevaluate the labels. Uh, we are, so we are going to reevaluate the reference vectors to be the means of the clusters in the current step. So the cluster represented by this code vector is simply, uh, you know, made of all these data points. So when we take the mean of these data points, it's going to be somewhere here. And so we update this reference vector to be the mean of its cluster, and it's going to be basically set to be here. And for this um, uh, cluster, so it's made just of two points. And so we move the uh, second reference vector to the mean of its cluster, and that's going to, to place it right here. And, and so we have um, the second reference vector set here. And then we reevaluate the labels of all of our data points. And all of a sudden we see that all of these data points here, they uh, they are closer to this reference vector. So they are going to be set to belong to, to the cluster represented by this reference vector. And all the other data points continue to be closer to, to this uh, reference vector. And once we fix the labels then, or update the labels, we do an update of the reference vectors. And again, uh, it's going to be set to the mean of the cluster. So this one, for example, being, um, a representative of this cluster is going to be updated, updated to the mean of the cluster. So it's going to be moved right here. And you can see it in this picture uh, here. And uh, this one is going to be updated to the mean of its own cluster. And, and that's going to, to place it right here. And then we are updating the labels of, of all these data points. And uh, it turns out that there are more data points that are closer to this one than to that one. So um, we have uh, this cluster. So in other words, in this example, you see how how the situation evolves from, from some random choices that seem to be uh, quite uh, out of sync with the data set. You see how the data, in some sense, is dragging uh, these uh, reference vectors towards the means or, or, or uh, uh, somehow much closer to the center of, of, these, um, of these data points. And so... Uh, we see that that uh, intuitively speaking, so just just on this example, we see that k-means uh, does seem to work fine, at least for this uh, data set.